On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, we're going to take a look at CodeMade, a Visual Studio extension that cleans and simplifies your code. You are not going to want to miss this one. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today on Skype from Indianapolis is Steve Cadwallader. Hey, Steve, how are you? Doing great, how are you? Excellent. Steve is the author of CodeMade, which is a Visual Studio extension uh, that he's going to show us. It has more than a million downloads and is very well received. And Steve, you're going to show us all about this extension and all the wonderful things it does. Yeah, um, be excited to do that. Tell us a, a little bit about um, why you wrote it and uh, when did you write it? Sure. Yeah, I started writing it in 2006 and first published it in 2007. Uh, I wrote it because I was very particular about the way the code is organized and uh, cleaning up white space and little things. And okay. like most developers, got tired of doing things automatically. And I kind of got into it from a friend, Eric Potter, who was starting to work on Visual Studio macros. I saw what he was doing there and mm -hmm. I started with an add-on and eventually moved up to an extension. Cool. And it's available in the marketplace. People can get it. We'll have a link for it in the show notes. All right. Show us what it can do. Great. So yeah, uh, to get started with CodeMade, I recommend going to our website, codemade.net. Um, from there, you can see a high-level overview of the features. Um, you can go down into detail, detailed documentation as well as a YouTube video demo walkthrough. Um, we also have a blog, and you can see some information about getting started. Uh, this is an open source project, so I love contributions. Uh, we've had over 25 contributors so far, and it's been great. Uh, cool. You can also, of course, go to the Visual Studio Marketplace, like Robert mentioned, to uh, download it, look at reviews, and we do all of our work in GitHub. That's where you can file issues or um, grab the source code. Oh, excellent. So if somebody wanted to know what it takes to write an extension like that, they can just go to GitHub and poke around in the code. Yeah, absolutely. And I've worked cool. with a few other extension authors who've done just that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Great. So I can start diving into some of the features. Let me hop over to a Visual Studio solution. Um, so the bread and butter of CodeMade where it started out is code cleaning. Uh, so the idea is taking code that's kind of just on the page and making it a little bit more cleaned up automatically. This is really just saving you from having to do these things uh, yourself. So for example, if we look at this file, we can see we have unused using statements. We have the using statements out of order. We have classes and methods that don't have an access modifier on them, so you don't know if they're internal or private by default. Uh, we have regions that don't actually have any content in them. We've got extra white space at the front of the method, extra white space between lines, extra white space between arguments at the end of the lines, and so on and so forth. Um, so what, what I like to do uh, is show you everything through a context menu um, you can use in Visual Studio. Um, so you just right click on the document, there's code made where you have all of our different commands available. Um, as an aside, everything has a keyboard shortcut, but I'll of course do everything through the menu so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, so for example, just hit clean up active document and you can see we'll go ahead and clean up everything for you. So you can see the using statements are in order, um, the access modifiers have been added, a bunch of white spaces have been removed and standardized. Um, we do this by leveraging some of the existing functionality that's inside Visual Studio. So for example, removing and sorting using statements is now uh, natively baked in. Uh, we started back in Visual Studio 2005. It was our first integration before that ever existed. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously leveraging and gladly using anything that Visual Studio starts to build in natively. So does that just mean less code that you have to maintain? Yes, <laughs> absolutely, which I'm all for. Uh, yeah. I won't mind if someday everything's just baked in natively. <laughs> Um, likewise, for formatting document, a lot of the argument level uh, white space in there is something that's already built in through the uh, Visual Studio's format document. Mm -hmm. but a lot of there's stuff around white space and uh, things like that uh, we handle. Um, so you can do that mainly one file at a time. Uh, a lot more powerful, though, is you can turn on uh, automatic cleanup on save. So every time you save your file, we'll automatically step in, we'll clean up the file for you before it gets written out to disk. Um, that's a real nice way to just kind of turn it on and forget it. Yep. Um, that is off by default, just so people don't get too surprised, but that's usually one setting I recommend flipping once you get comfortable with the tool. You can also do code up, uh, clean up across a whole bunch of files at once. So for example, you can clean up all of your open documents, you can clean up your entire solution, or you can also pick any level inside the solution, explore, right click, and clean up the selected code. So for example, if you just want to clean up a specific project, um, like your project inside of a bigger solution, you can do it that way too. So all does the entire solution, and if you want to do one project at a time, you do it at the mm -hmm. project level. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, or you can do it at folder levels or anything that's appropriate. Okay. Cool. So that's the heart of the cleaning fix feature. Uh, next big feature is what we call the digging feature. So the idea is you have this file and you want to kind of get an overview of what you're looking at. So we've got a tool window uh, called Code Made Spade because it digs through your code that'll show you kind of a visual overview of the file. So for example, we can see our constructors, our properties, methods, so on and so forth. Um, you can click on anything to navigate to it. For example, I click on this event and my editor window will jump to that file, or sorry, jump to that event. You can double click on something to highlight all the codes. So if you want to put it on the clipboard, do something like that. Um, you can middle click on regions and we'll synchronize back and forth between the two, whether they're open or collapse. So those are all kind of useful. Mm -hmm. uh, one other thing I like to do is if you come into a file you're not real familiar with and perhaps things are kind of scattered across, uh, first you just kind of want to look at them in a standard order. So you can actually, even though we sort by file order by default, you can switch the way you view so you can view all the types grouped together without affecting the file. So you can see all of our methods have been grouped together and put in a logical order. Mm -hmm. Or you can just do a straightforward alphabetical sort too if you just want to look at it that way if you know exactly what you're looking for. One other way that's handy to search is by just using the search window. So for example, I know I'm looking for something with the word path in it. I can just type that in. It's just like Solution Explorers using the same API. Uh, right. If you want to find the thing you're looking for, jump straight to it. Mm -hmm. So those are all useful. Um, something else that's really helpful is you can do drag and drop reorder of your code. So for example, I've got this is initialized pri uh, private field at the bottom of the file. Uh, style cop conventions are that's at the top of the file. So you can click and drag to move that up to the top of your file. It'll oh. move those code members around for you. That is cool. So, yep. And one step further than that is you can do multi-select. So for example, if I want to take everything in this region, I can either shift click or control click, just like the Windows Explorer, and drag those items around. So let's say I wanted those methods to both be at the top of the file for some reason. You can see that I can do that real quick through there as well. Nice. Um, it does have a couple of other items like um, finding references and uh, rooting regions, things like that, that are hooked in as well. And then you can delete methods from there as well, <laughs> or members, yep. excuse me. Yep. Yep. Yeah, or nice. getting rid of regions, that's a popular one. People don't like regions a lot, so yeah, that's there as well. Does that get rid of everything uh, in the region or just the region identifier? It gets rid of everything that's in the region okay. at that time, yep. Cool. Um, so you can do that manually through the digging window. The uh, next step forwards from there is you may want to kind of just set that up on auto run. Right? You don't want to manually drag those items around. Um, so we have a, another feature called reorganizing. Um, so this will basically do that automatically for you. Right. So for example, you can see we have this file where the fields are scattered across, the properties are scattered across, methods are scattered across. Um, so we just want to kind of start the fresh slate. You can uh, go in, right click, and come into reorganize active document. Let me refresh this. And you'll see that we moved all the fields to the top of the file. Follow that by the constructors, the delegates, events, properties, so on and so forth. Um, so that's a nice way to kind of clean up a file that you're going to start over with or that you've been looking into already. And do you have the ability um, to set a custom order for the organizer? Yes, absolutely. Yep. So yeah, we'll get into options a little bit later and okay. I can show that. Um, but it defaults to the style cop um, guidelines. Right. Cool. Um, and one other feature I didn't show in the other window with is the ability to do, um, we have these tool tips that show up. So for example, if you mouse over something, we'll show you any XML comments associated with it. We'll do a McCabe complexity calculation for you so you can see if something is kind of complex. Um, as well as we'll give you like little modifiers. It's a static, read, write, things like that. Just little cues for you to uh, just kind of work through the files. So, yeah. And that shows um, what those icons were uh, over to the right. Yeah, let me show that back up again. Um, so yeah, these are just straight out of Visual Studio's icons. So the same things you'd see like in the outline window um, or in the yeah, Classic I mean, Explorer. The ones over on the right, the 15, the one, the two. Yeah, sorry. So that uh, 15 is a McCabe complexity score. Okay. Um, it's my own rough calculation. It's not perfect, but it's close, pretty close. Um, so for example, you can see this method has a whole bunch of or conditionals. So that's triggering a high McCabe complexity score within that method. And I kind of highlight those. Um, you can configure what the thresholds are. I think I have a 10 is kind of like a warning level and 15 is an alert level. So you kind of see where's the meat of your file when you kind of look at something right away or if something is getting kind of unwieldy. Okay. Cool. Cool. So one other uh, 
High level feature we have is comment formatting. So for example, let me turn off word wrap. So, um, you can see this comment just kind of goes on and on and on. It's really long. Uh, the parameters are just kind of in place. There's white space amongst them, things like that. You do have a comment formatting feature, which kind of standardize that for you. You can specify, you know, what column you want it to wrap at, which tags you want to auto wrap, things like that. Yep. Nice little handy feature to use. And then below that, a lot of the features are kind of just more little small utilities. So for example, we have a join feature. So if we look at this property accessor and we want to join those lines together, um, you can do that very simply. Obviously, that's a very basic thing okay. to do. Yep. Uh, you have the ability to sort code. That's um, I'm sure that'll show up natively sooner or later, but um, it's a basic alphabetical sort on the code. So you can see that when these attributes were out of order before, we can alphabetize those into a certain order if you'd like to. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And then um, hop over to another solution for a couple other features. Um, one other thing we have is when you're looking at a document, you can hop to that same document inside the Solution Explorer. Um, this has been built in natively through the Sync Active document in later versions. Right. We still have our shortcut, but we actually just turn around and invoke the native command for people who have that muscle memory. So you can see it'll hop directly to that file within the Solution Explorer. Um, we also have the ability to collapse at different levels. Um, so for example, if you have a whole bunch of um, Folders that are open, you just want to collapse them at a certain level, you can do that. Um, you can also do it at the top level. Again, that's one that Visual Studio is now built in natively, so you can do that as well. And then one more I want to show off is um, when you have a large solution waiting for your build times, there isn't a lot of feedback, I think, in how far you are in your builds, what's being built right now, or is it build going well, is the build aired? So I have a little tool window that will show you your build. So for example, if I go rebuild my solution, you can see here the little build window comes up and it'll show me which project it's building um, as it goes. Which usually is much faster. <laughs> so are you basing um, it on the amount of code or how long it takes to build things? How do you make that calculation? So yeah, it's coming from the Visual Studio. It does have APIs around build progress events. So you okay. can know when individual projects complete. So for example, the code made projects built. Now our unit tests and integration tests can kick off and build on top of that. Okay. And we also show like, so it'll show a green status or a red status, obviously, as those builds are running through. We also do a little update inside the Windows uh, taskbar, so you can see it down there as well. So it's kind of nice. It's based on the number of projects? Yes. Okay. See, so I have three projects for code made, right? So there's a primary solution, integration tests, and unit tests. So right. the integration tests and unit tests depend on the primary project before it can be built. So you can see that just that one project is building right now. And as soon as that other one fires, finishes, the other two can start off concurrently. Right. So you don't have the ability to calculate it based on the amount of work the build has to do, right? No, it's really just project level. Okay. But uh, I've had some larger solutions that had like 120 projects in them. It's really yeah. useful for those. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, and so then one last area I want to show is kind of the options within CodeMade. Um, so when you install CodeMade, there'll be a top level menu right up here. Mm -hmm. um, shows all those different commands we had. Also, I didn't show removing all regions. Um, that's another popular one if you just don't like any regions in your files or if you remove selected regions, things like that. Um, if you go down in the options window, we have, um, we really tried to focus on having the defaults be pretty good so you don't generally have to mess with these. I'm personally of the opinion, it doesn't really matter what your coding style is. You just want your code base to be consistent. Uh, people can argue a lot about little details, but honestly, as long as it's the same, that's usually been my goal. So I try to make the settings as general for most people to keep them happy. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, uh, you know, people have a lot of requests, a lot of very specific features that they want to have. So I think we have 170 options or so. Trying to keep somewhat managed uh, within here. Um, and I obviously won't go through all those by any stretch of imagination, but I just want to go through a couple of these pains at a high level. Um, so the first one is we have the ability to have both user level settings, which would be on your machines stored in your user profile, as well as solution specific settings. Oh. Um, a good example of this is if you have specific files you want to exclude from operations. So for example, I don't want any of my integration test data, even though it looks like c -sharp code, I don't want it to be cleaned um, because of course that's what the test is supposed to be doing for me. Right. So you can specify you know, files that you want to exclude uh, based on regular expressions. But that's something that's a good example of a solution-specific setting 
um, versus a user level setting. And you can store that. Um, it's just a codemade.config file you store right alongside your solution file. Um, so we support a whole bunch of languages, um, as you can see up here. I won't list them all. Um, C Sharp and VB definitely get the best support because those have the most uh, integration with VB, uh, Visual Studio's APIs. C++, C++ would be behind that. Um, we allow you to turn on operations even for text files, but it's pretty basic, just end line white space, duplicate white lines, things like that. Okay. Um, another high-level feature that has recently been added um, from one of our uh, community contributors is the ability to turn on or off any one of our features. So if you want to get rid of some feature, you don't want to see it in any of the um, context menus, um, you don't want to hook into any event handlers, you can just turn those off altogether and it will disappear from the menus. Um, pretty straightforward, just unregisters it. Um, most operations in CodeMade are idle until invoked, so it's usually not too harmful to leave everything on, but if you just want to clean up your context menus, you're welcome to do that. What was the general impetus for that? The, this person only wanted to see the things that they were going to use regularly? Yeah, so they thought this menu was too long. Um, they want okay. it to be smaller. All right. And same could go for this one, where it does show everything. So sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's a nice feature to have. Um, sure. If anybody wants to turn things off. Um, so we talked before about the reorganizing types. So yes, you can customize those. So if you come down to reorganizing types, you'll see the default order. So fields, constructors, so on and so forth. Okay. Kind of have a hint down at the bottom that you can do a lot of customization here. So for example, if we want to merge our properties and index together, properties and indexers together, you can just drag and drop those onto each other. Mm -hmm. We can rename those to something else if we wanted. So on and so forth. So you can customize that however you want. That will affect both what you see in the digging tool window as well as what the reorganizing uh, functionality invokes and cleans up the file with. And, and you could have that at the solution level or the user level, right? So if there's Correct. a particular project you're working on where you're using a different, a non-default or non-standard order, you could do that. Um, yes, absolutely. Okay. And then you can yep. always reset to default. Very important button right there, right? Oh, yes. I like that one. It's uh, super useful for debugging. Yep. And then uh, I guess one last thing I wanted to show off in here is um, this. We have a little bit of integration with third-party tools. Um, so JetBrains ReSharper, Telerik, and XAML Styler. Mm -hmm. um, these are all deactivated because I'm not using any of them anymore. But um, you can turn those on, and we'll basically chain our cleanup alongside theirs, just like we're chaining alongside Visual Studio's cleanup. Okay. And you can even uh, customize that further if you have other commands you want. Right. Awesome. So, so have you, yeah. I assume you've found over the years that more and more of the features actually get baked into Visual Studio. Yeah. Um, which then gives you the ability to write less code and just hook into what Visual Studio is doing? Yeah. Um, that's been really useful. I think some of the big ones were, of course, uh, removing and sorting using statements was yep. useful, mm -hmm. as well as collapsing the solution explorer. Cool. Um, so how difficult was it to write this extension? What advice would you have for people who are thinking of doing something similar or potentially are thinking of um, looking at your code and either leveraging it or helping to contribute? How hard is sure. it to figure out the model for Visual Studio and then also how hard is it to write an extension like this? Yeah, that's a great question, and it's very different today than a decade ago when I wrote it. Um, <laughs> so back when I wrote it, uh, Visual Studio 2005, uh, it was mostly add-ons at that point. I was leaning a lot on Carlos Quintero had a blog with Visual Basic examples, and that was about the main source of data I had. Mm -hmm. um, back then, everybody's on SourceForge, things like that, so there wasn't a ton of available code to refer to. And nowadays, there's been a lot of push from that team to really improve the documentation, so there's stuff out there directly on MSDN, um, and there's a ton of example um, repos on GitHub. Okay. Uh, Matt Christensen has a ton of extensions. He's definitely yep. a great resource, and I've leaned on him, um, as well as he's got some examples of automation event uh, through App Voyeur, so you can have an uh, alpha channel, basically a CI channel, really easy for your extension. So right. I definitely recommend checking out other uh, extensions as a good starting point. Okay. Cool. So CodeMade, awesome tool. Uh, highly recommend uh, people take a look at it, download it, join the ranks of the million plus people who have downloaded it and are currently using it. That's tremendous. Thank you. Thanks a lot for coming on the show. Thank you very much for having me. All right, hope you enjoyed that. Go take a look at the tool and we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.